Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video by Demon Warrior Tech. Um, today we're going to be talking about a cool little open source app called Photo Prism. Uh, what it basically allows you to do is run your own locally hosted, basically Google Photos, uh, on your own computer. And you can run it on a reverse proxy, so it's got albums, it collects videos, does um, FFmpeg transcoding, there's different library scans. And I'm going to teach you how to set it up today and how to uh, make sure it works with your system, including remote drive. So let's say you have a server downstairs holding all your photos. This will work on a local network drive on Windows. So let's get to it. Okay, guys. So let's start off by going to Docker Desktop. And if you just type in Docker Desktop on Google, I also put the link in the description for this download. You click on Download Docker Desktop. And we're going to download it to our downloads folder. So we'll just put it in here. Okay. Once that is done downloading, we will load it up. So let's just give it a minute to load up. Okay, now that that's done, let's load up Docker Desktop. Click Run. You want to click Yes on the Administrative Privileges. Now it's going to install Docker Desktop. Also, you need to install WSL. It's not necessary, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier, so it's probably going to do it for you. Um, I'll go through that. It's going to tell you you need to install Docker WSL, which is basically running Linux on Windows or sub-running sub, sub a sub-Linux on Windows. Um, it emulates basically that setup, so we're going to let that install. I'll come back to you once it's done. Okay, so once it's done installing, you're just going to click close and restart. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let me come back when I'm done. Okay, guys, so once you restart, you should be pulled up with this prompt when you load it back up. Docker subscription service, yada, yada, yada. You can just click agree because it's not needed. Um, next, I would recommend you sign to your Docker account, so we're going to click Sign In. This is going to take you to Docker Hub, which it'll log you in, so I'm going to log in. Mm. Once that's done, it's going to ask you to, oh, do this incomplete. So we're going to have to restart once we do that, so let's do that real quick. Once you click that redirect, it should log you in. See, now I'm logged in. Um, we're going to restart one more time to finish this up. Just give me one more minute. Okay, guys, so I think I figured out the issue finally. If you go to WSL2 and this link that pulls up in the command prompt, it's going to take you to this page. You want to go to download latest package, which is right here. I've already download <coughs> excuse me, downloaded it. This will update your kernel. So you click yes, click yes, click finish. Now we should be able to launch Ubuntu, hopefully, on our WLS. And there we go. Now it's installing Ubuntu. We'll let that install. And I will come back to you in a minute once it is finished. Okay, so next you're going to be faced with this username. So I'm just going to name mine Demon Warrior Tech. That's my Unix username. Oh, wait, you got to do all lowercase. So Demon Warrior Tech has to be all lowercase. You can type in our password. That can be any way you want it. All right, I'll type it in again. Alright, once that's done and we've installed WSL, now we can go about and we can install our, check our Docker. So if we go to Docker, now if we restart it, it should pull up with our WSL. Just give me one second. Make sure there's no software updates. Okay, and we're going to click on this little icon right here, if it's already open, and just click um, restart up here. Okay, so to restart, you just click on your little icon down here, and you're going to click right-click and click restart. It's going to restart Docker for us, so we'll wait for that to load up. Hopefully this time it'll give us a green little icon down here showing it's set up correctly. So once it starts, we should be good to go to start our Libre photos. I'll come back to you once it starts. Okay, guys, so I'm back. So I figured out what the issue was. I had installed Docker Desktop. I've installed the kernel update from that website. 
on Microsoft stock or desktop. Um, and then what you need to do is it'll probably ask you to factory set. Just click reset. Um, and if it pauses and says stop, you'll need to restart your PC because something that wrong with do Docker desktop where if you don't restart it, it won't fully update Docker desktop. So if that happens to you and just says and Docker desktop says like stopped or it's not showing the green bar, that could be why it's not working. So once we have our Ubuntu base installed, we've had our WSL set up, we, can, we have Docker desktop set up. Now we click on start. And you can obviously click skip. We don't really need that. But now our Docker desktop is running. It is green, so we should be all good on that. So Okay, so once we've successfully set up Docker desktop on Windows, we're going to go to the Photo Prism Docs, which I'll add the link in the description. You click on Control C to W Get. We're going to go into this, and we're going to go into my drive, which is going to be CD Tools, and then C, uh, CD Seeds Clone Tools. This is where I put my where I want to put my Photo Prism documents. So I'm going to do CD MKDIR, or you can do this in the UI. This is just making a directory. So we're going to do MKDIR Photo Prism, which I already have it. So if I do LS. So here's um, Photo Prism. So I'm going to do CD Photo Prism. Then I'm going to do the pull of the Docker Compose. So it's going to get the Docker Compose. Awesome. So pulled it. Now we need to go with setting up our Docker Compose. Now I made a Reddit post a while back with um, all this information in it for the Docker Compose. Um, and I don't know if this is anyone seen this, but it's really good information about how to install this right how to get your remote SIFs working. So just so I, I'm showing you I can do it, I'm going to do that real quick and I'll come back to you. Okay, so it's a little different actually than what I originally said. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the Docker page, or I'm sorry, the Docker Compose for this um, photo prism. We're going to right click this and open it in a new tab. This will pull up the Docker Compose. We're going to copy and paste it all. Then we're going to go into our folder where we want our photo prism. We're going to click New text document. You just do that by right clicking docker compose.yml okay. and then we're going to open this up in our text editor. I'm going to paste that documentation and then we're going to add our local drives in. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so just so you know, these are the two things you need to add for your remote drives if you're going to use a remote drive or network drive in Windows. So one thing you need is um, this section, which I'll, again, I'll put this example in the tutorial. You want to have photo volumes, photo prisons original, and that goes right below the version of the, the Docker Compose. So you just want to copy this whole text in here. And this one, you want to put your remote drive's IP. So let's say mine's 192.168.1. Dot one 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 for example, okay, and then you want to put where your directory is inside. So let's say I go to that directory on my local host. So let's go into one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. Let's see, I have multiple network drives. I go to Jellyfin Media. Let's say, um, well, it's not there. Actually, be on my other drive. So we'll do one nine two one six eight dot one dot. It's one nineteen. Yeah. So here I have Jellyfin Media. Oh, wrong one. I've got Jellyfin Media 2 actually, and that's going to have my Google Photos right here that I downloaded. And now I just copy this whole thing. Let's say I only want to do, I don't know, my, my family photos. Okay. So I go into here, and I go into here, copy that, and I can just put it right in here. So put that IP in here. Make sure you do it the other way so it's got the forward, forward facing, not backwards facing dashes. Because remember, we're converting Windows to Linux. So this should this is a SIFS mount. And then when you have your address, if you have security on there, you're going to need this O here, which I have security on mine. So I do my other IP, which is, you know, the same as before for the network drive. And then I just type in my username and my password. So I'm going to do that real quick. Hold on. I'm going to blur this out real quick. Um, let me pause it. And then, so I didn't change it because I don't want to blur it out. But once you do that, you can do th this. Is, so this is for our originals. This means this is our one album we wanted to link. Now, if you want to link a second album or any other albums, you just change the Photo Prism Original 2, Original 3, and just copy that standard. It doesn't have to be that. It's just easier to keep track of it. 
So let's say I'm doing a second one, which is, uh, we'll do that real quick. We'll do 192.168.1.1.1.119 again, and we'll just copy the same over here. This is, again, the same remote network drive. And this is if you want to separate sections out. So let's say this one's going to be, I don't know, um, but I have one of that drive. High school memories. Let's do that one. So if we click on here, go to high school memories. Let's add this in here. Again, we want to make sure we have the forward slashes, not backward slashes. Because again, we're converting code from Windows to Linux. Okay. And then this one's going to be school members. And I do my Samba password again for my SMB. And bada bing, bada boom. Now all we have to do is go into here. Now, any one you add to your volumes, you're going to need to add it to here. So you do photo prisms and then the original two, which is our drive. And that's going to show up under photo prism originals and two as the actual volume inside photo prism okay so let me finish editing this and i'll run it i'll show you what it looks like okay so once we have that done we've made our docker compose now we can go into powershell and run it so now that we're in pro photo prism we do docker compose up dash d we'll see what happens You know, um, yes, a couple of Morning, Mr. Boss. Morning. Very well, I'm I'm very well. Uh, I say, you're looking at it. Oh, there we go.
Okay, so I realized I had one minor issue with a forward slash. So once I completed that, it should load up this time. And there we go. It's pulling Maria DB, pulling Photo Prism. And now in just a moment, we should see a pop-up on our Docker containers. So we'll wait for that to load. I'm going to pause it, and we'll come back. Okay, so now you can see that it um, shows in here that we have started this successfully and it's asking Docker to allow access to our firewall. We'll just click allow. Bam, there's photo prism. If we go into here, we can just click on it, make sure it's all up and running, and click on this. And it should be able to open a browser. And there you go, it's 23, local is 2342. Log in with my admin username. Let me just admin, I think admin. Okay, so I figured it out. So in your Docker Compose, it's going to put a default password as insecure. And the username is admin. It should load up now. And once it does, you should see all your photos recognized in there. It should ask you, to, though, to change your um, administrative account, username, and password, which we will do. So hold on a sec. Let me go into here. I'm going to change my password to something better, so something more secure. Change. I misspelled something. Hold on. All right, once that's changed, we can go into the library and sync our photos, which should be in there. Okay, so once we're here, we're going to go into libraries. Once you change our password, we're going to go into import, or we'll start with index. We'll do a complete scan. And we'll start it, and that should run a scan for all of our images on our um, on our network drives. Hopefully, it'll find them all. Once that's done, I'll come back. Okay, guys. So I've synced a couple things. As you can see, it sorts it out by videos and searches, and it shows different photos. But really, what's cool about this is it has video support for HEVC and encoding and decoding, so you can use hardware uh, acceleration to use this. Here's another one where it sorts folders. There's also libraries. There's a private folder, so if you don't want people to see it, you can add places to each photo. I believe there's also a moments filter where you can add filters in. Um, people, so you can have facial recognition, so you can see show all faces. You can add those people to my face, you know, face recognition. So this is really cool, and uh, it's a cool little app. The next video I'm going to come out with is going to show you how to sync your G photos to sync thing. Uh, or a sync thing alternative that's uh, an app I found while I was looking into it. So you can sync that so it always syncs up with Photo Prism. So look out for that, guys. Thanks. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see anything else in the future. Thanks, guys.